Hello everyone, this is Brenda Wheeler from the International Institute of Genealogical Studies talking this today about Australian records. Now, why is it that everyone thinks that because I'm Australian, I should say good day, mate? Because frankly, nobody in Australia says good day, mate. So be aware that that is not a normal phrase to use for an Australian. So when we're researching, let's have a look at some of the normal websites that we would look at. And here I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so one I have started with is passenger listings. Sometimes you want to know, is there anything around about those ships that came to Australia? Is there anything about the journeys? And one of the uh, series of journals that is available is by Ian Nicholson. There's three volumes and... It's called the Log of Logs. Now, each of these logs is a separate book in its own right. So it could be here I've looked at volume one and I've put in what I've used here is the name of a, a more unusual ship to use as an example. And I've chosen the Basora Merchant. And in volume one, it's mentioned with its 1828 journey, London to Sydney. Then it came in 1829 to 30. So it left in 1829, arrived in Australia in 1830, where it says London Downs. So that's London and the Downs you frequently get mentioned is just off of Kent, so they've come out from Tilbury, which is in the Thames, and note that the, 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 uh, the river is the River Thames, not the Thames. It's the River Thames. And as the ship leaves the River Thames, it comes into the, oh, it's in the county of Kent, on the borders of county of Kent. And there is a an area of sea just outside there where it's it's pretty calm most of the time and the ships tend to lay over there they're out of the the hustle and the bustle of the river traffic and they lay over there waiting for fair weather to begin the journey so if you see that someone's left from the downs they've left from london and they've gone down the thames and anchored out in the downs, this quiet water, until the winds, etc., are favourable for the journey to start. So in this one, London to Downs, uh, London Downs, uh, that would be to Sydney again. And again, ditto 1831. But here we've got some other information. John Moncrief, that's... These are the captains, G. Johnson, John Moncrief, they're the captains. This time it left from Dublin to Sydney with 198 male prisoners. And it says Surgeon's Journals, 1828 to 1831. AJCP, PRO Real 3190. Remember that AJCP and that number, PRO Real 3190. And we'll look at that later on, or we'll look to see what is meant by that. But what that is telling us is that the surgeon's journals for the trips between 1828 and 1831 are available to us. 1839, same captain, 
This time it's an emigrant ship. So, and it's leaving from Bristol. Going to Sydney with 236 immigrants. Again, a surgeon's journal and another AJCP real number. PRO is the old name of what we now call the National Archives in Kew, PRO Public Record Office. So we've got some information there. It's not telling us much about the Basora, Basora merchant as a ship, but it's telling us that in existence are the surgeon's journals that may give us more information about the people on board and possibly the sicknesses and if anyone died on board. So the log of logs can be some very interesting uh, volumes to uh, look for, especially if you have an ancestor who came out on a ship and you know the name of the ship. Have a look, not just in one volume, look in all three, because Ian Nicholson, this was his first volume, and he updated information as it came to light. So in volume two, there may not be anything about the Basora merchant. And then in volume three, the Basora merchant may be mentioned again. So always look through the three uh, volumes that are available. And they are available online at zenodo.org forward slash records, in this case, slash 6901. So take a screenshot write down the, yeah, the website so that you too can have a look for free. These are Creative Commons, so they're available to everybody for free. So what can we find out about the Basora Merchant? This website is called Free Settler or Felon, and it's mainly about ancestors who went to a region of New South Wales, called the Hunter Valley. Very rich agricultural area that was used a lot by the agricultural company who, who were the Australian Agricultural Company who were big uh, sponsors of migrants out to work in their agricultural areas. So it could be that you find a ship mentioned on here with the convicts or passengers who then settled in the Hunter Valley. And here it's giving us a description of the Basora Merchant. This is on its Basora mer Merchant and the bracketed two or the two in parentheses. 1831 is the second journey, in other words. They embarked 200 men a voyage of 120 days. There were two deaths, and there we are. There's the surgeon's journal is available. There was a crew of 42 men. The vessel that came before it, the dock before it was the Asia, arrived on the 2nd of December, 1831. And the next vessel that arrived after that was the Norfolk in the, on the 9th of February, 1832. You can see, why I've selected an unusual name for a ship because if you are searching uh, newspaper records etc it's much harder to search for Asia or Norfolk than the Basora merchant. The captain was John Moncrief, the surgeon James Gilchrist and it fought, they follow the Irish convict ship trial and the convicts and passengers of the Basora merchant identified in the Hunter Valley are then given. The ship was built in Calcutta in 1818. Convicts were transported on the Basora merchant in 1828 and 1831. A lot of the convicts were, uh, were from counties in Ireland. In this case, you've got just about everywhere in Ireland were on the ship. You've got a military guard that was on board from the 4th uh, Regiment. 
And those 29 soldiers were accompanied by four women and four children. And the ship then went from Deptford, where it took on the, uh, the regiment, and went over to Ireland. And that's where these Irish convicts were. And some of the, there we are, here's the surgeon's journal. Someone's gone into it and looked for the names of the actual soldiers who were in the 4th Regiment. And two wives gave birth on the ship. The cabin passengers, it gives you the names of the cabin passengers. And these names, they're not all of the uh, passengers. These are the ones that relate to the Hunter Valley itself. Then we have the surgeon, a bit about the surgeon, which uh, and the entry for the surgeon. Some of the entries that he made in his in his surgeon's records. They departed Dublin and arrived at Port Jackson. And you can see um, August, September, October, November, December. So that's taken, the journey's taken them pretty much five months before it's arrived in Sydney. Five months on a ship. And if there was only two deaths, that ship has done extremely well. There was a muster held on board and notes from the records, the youngest prisoners were sent to Carter's barracks. And if you remember last time we had a meeting, I mentioned Carter's barracks there when my ancestor Joseph Loom was sent there as a punishment. Carter's barracks uh, were barracks for the army, but they also were um jails for the prisoners and uh, where prisoners with hard labour were made to work the, uh, the treadmill. And you look, James Orwell, age 14, William Doyle, age 13, Michael Kilfoyle, age 15. These were the convicts who were sent to Carter's barracks on that trip. We have other names of people who came on that ship. We have some idea of what the colony was like in those days. While many, while some convicts managed to turn their lives around, there were many who never conformed. And there we are. They're, they're giving you information about those particular convicts. There we are, Carter's Barracks. Again, it's got to be because, look, 10 days on the treadmill for disrepair disrespect to the superintendent of the Hulk. Now, we, we learnt last time that the uh, Hulks are ships that are no longer used as shipping. They are uh, Hulks. A lot of them were moored in the Thames to confine the prisoners before their journey to Australia. So, Yep, the treadmill was available in England as well as the one in Carter's barracks. And you can see how much information there is about that one ship and that journey. So this particular website, Free Settler or Felon, it might be worth having a look, even though, even if your ancestors did not actually end up in the Hunter Valley. It could still contain information about some of your ancestors. Now, we had that uh, AJCP. This is the Australian Joint Copying Project. Now, what has happened is a lot of records from early Australia ended up back in the government offices in England. They were reporting back to the government because this was a government exercise. So there were a lot of, there's a lot of material in the National Archives, as well as county archives, personal records, uh, personal uh, histories, 
local libraries, amazing places where they have looked to find this information. And what has happened is there's been a joint copying project so that anything relating to Australia, and look at the dates. This is material relating to Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific dating from 1560. That's way before Australia was even considered. 1560 to 1984. So there is a lot of information that has been transferred into this copying project. Now, that copying project, as we saw, was available on film reels in, in the old days. But now it is all online at the, this is the National Library of Australia. And it is through one of their digitization projects that a lot of this stuff is now online through what they call Trove. Now, Trove is a National Library of Australia where they keep the newspapers amongst all the other books. And if I look at the categories here, newspapers and gazettes, magazines, maps, research and reports, books and libraries, diaries, letters and archives, music, audio and video, people and organisations, websites and lots more. So those are just some of the catalogues that are available to search online. And you can see, yes, Australia does have haunted buildings. And you can see a lot of stuff discover more within Trove itself. So there's lots to read about Trove within the website. So don't just go and madly, <coughs> excuse me, uh, madly search for the newspapers. Have a look at the rest of the stuff that's there. And especially remember that joint copying project with those real numbers that are now available on Trove. Okay, so I talked about the newspapers as being one of the areas that one could search on Trove. And here we have the information that is in the newspapers about the Basora merchant. Now you know why I chose an unusual name. I have uh, one ship that I'm desperately trying to find, but it was the SS Hope. I tell you, there is hope in every item in Australia. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's why I went for the bus or a merchant. So you'll see here lots of different articles about where it arrived, uh, anchored in quarantine, the west side of the bay, um, immigrants per the bus or a merchant. So females on board the Basora merchant. There were lots of male convicts. There were lots of men in Australia looking for wives. And so they had ships actually bringing females across on uh, uh, to Australia with, with the intent to marry some of the men on, who were in Australia. So there's magazines and newsletters Arrivals of vessels. Now, this one obviously here uh, has only been done by optical character recognition or uh, AI um, and hasn't quite been uh, uh, translated correctly from the newspaper print. Arrivals of vessels in Hobart Town. So, this is going over to here. Uh, this is Tasmania as we know it, which in those days was Van Diemen's Land. And so it, the Basora merchant has also gone to um, to Van Diemen's Land or Tasmania with 530 male prisoners. So vessels then departed. Here we are. It didn't stay around too long. 
uh, it's it's off again. Uh, it's from Hobart. It's gone to the Swan River. Uh, so lots of information about the Basora merchant. And I can carry on down images, maps and, uh, maps and artifacts. So there's going to be, there's a photograph of from 1880 of the Basora merchant. And there's William Yeomans. So if anyone's looking for the, for William Yeomans, he came out on the Basora merchant. And this was taken in 1874. A very, very early photograph. So you can see, you can go down this, this reports, research and reports um, of Basora Merchant arrived in Van VDL Van Diemen's Land, Tasmania. Inscriptions and images uh, of the North Head Quarantine Station, where some people didn't make it. They got to Australia, but never made it out of the quarantine station. Decorative bodies, the significance of convict tattoos. There you are. Some of those convict tattoos do have a significance. So it's surprising the information that you can actually see from looking through just one catalogue entry or a, a ship in the National Library of Australia. Lots of, and there's these. Now, finally, we come down to the reels um, from, here we are, there's AJCP reel number 3190 and 3213, the other one that was mentioned in that log of logs. So you can follow through from the log of logs and actually read, in this case, the surgeon's reports of from the ship. There is something similar as well in New Zealand. I haven't forgotten New Zealand. They have what is called papers passed. And here we are. Here's the newspaper. It's the newspaper site of New Zealand. So it's from the New Zealand Library. And you can look through the newspapers there. And I haven't put a search in here at all. So I haven't even searched for the Basora merchant to see if it went to New Zealand. But you can see how there's shipping arrivals, late shipping. Now, these shipping arrivals are fascinating. When a ship arrived in port, the most ships were covered by insurance. It was a very dangerous undertaking, shipping in those days. And so most ships, when they arrived in a port, a telegram went off to the big insurance shipping agents, and they were Lloyd's, Lloyd's of London. There are Lloyd's books you can look at with descriptions of the ships, but in the newspapers, these telegrams are then printed as shipping news or Lloyd's update. And in some cases, if you've got an unusual name for a ship, you can actually follow its trip out to Australia. The different times it made port, each time it went to a port to refurbish its stock, its supplies, refuel, etc., it sent an, a telegram to Lloyd's to say it had safely arrived. And those telegrams are the information that is then published in the newspapers as Lloyd's shipping or the shipping news. So if you want to know about the trip that your ancestors made, and this is not just to Australia, this can be to uh, South America, uh, that, Lots of different places. Perhaps you had a ship that was going to America, but it made different ports within America. Perhaps you had a ship that went to Canada. When did it arrive? Did it stop in, in America first or did it then carry on to America? These are the sort of things you can get from where the ship went. And each time it reported back to the insurance company that it had arrived safely. 
So sometimes it's fascinating just to look in the newspapers with the name of the unusual name of a ship to see if you can follow the journey out to whichever country you're interested in. Okay, so with any national archives, in this case, the in this case, I'm back to the Australian Library, but New Zealand archives, New Zealand Library are the same. You will find links and finding aids, research aids to help you with your research. So it is worth always looking at the research leaflets for any country to find out the best places to look for ideas on research. And if I go to the using the library in the National Library, research guides, that's what you want. And look, family history, research, research guides. That's the sort of thing. There we are, Australian Joint Copying Project. It's all there, just using the library, getting started, research tools and resources. That's the sort of thing to look at in any archives or any library that you try and visit. So hopefully that's given you a bit more of an insight into what you can do with any archives, not just the Australian and New Zealand archives and libraries. Have a look, see what is available. And good luck with your research. Thank you for listening. It's Brenda Wheeler from the International Institute of Genealogical Studies, not saying good day, mate. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>